This tutorial is about the key decisions you need to make at the writing and production stage that will help you master your music to a louder, average level. How you put your music together and the instruments and arrangement you choose will have a massive impact on your music's loudness. You need to keep an eye on your music's frequency balance and amplitude levels right from the first note you play. Learning which frequencies are perceived loud by your audience and which ones will kill your master is essential learning for anyone who masters their own music. So, even though this isn't a lesson on mixing, these tips will help give your music that professional edge before you even think about mastering. It's obvious, but if you produce dance, hip-hop, TV and film, and to some extent rock, it's often easy for your music to end up with too many sounds in one part of the frequency range. If you stack too many instruments in one area of the frequency spectrum, you'll end up with an unbalanced mix, with perhaps anywhere from 2 to 4 dB of extra volume in this frequency range alone. When mastering, you could end up having real problems getting the music as loud as you want because of the extra volume in this small frequency range. If you have to overly EQ or compress the offending frequencies, you may end up doing more damage to the final master than you intended. To help achieve a well-balanced mix, choose instruments that take up their own space and frequency range. This will help balance out the mix and make the mastering process easier and louder too. Solving masking problems at the mix stage will help create a cleaner and louder master. Too many instruments in the same frequency range not only adds volume, it also adds unwanted harmonics and overtones. These harmonics can seriously affect mastering and how the track will transfer to different playback systems. Ok, so you've ignored my first tip and have two instruments that sound fat and amazing and you just have to use them both. Problem is, they have high energy in the same frequency bands and you're struggling to hear the individual qualities because they are masking each other. What can you do other than drop one of the sounds? And let's face it, I know you're not going to do that. The answer is a very simple one and a trick often employed by top engineers. Simply thin out one of the sounds. By attenuating the problem frequencies with a parametric EQ, you will most likely find both instruments become clearer in the mix. Whatever you do, don't boost the frequencies because you will add more volume and potential bad harmonics to your mix. If you can, giving your sounds their own sense of space with panning is another effective method to help solve masking problems. If you are finding that you are still having issues, you may need to rewrite the part or push one instrument into a different frequency band. Ultimately, if you sort out masking, you will have an easier ride when you come to master the final mix. This is a great production trick that will help give more space and clarity to your mixes and in turn ensure a louder master. Complementary EQ is very simple. The process is to use equalization to attenuate one instrument while boosting another. There are two effective methods. The first I call the same frequency complement and here's just one example of how you might apply it. Getting the drums and bass sitting together perfectly can often be a challenge and usually requires some form of processing. This is a major generalisation, but let's assume I need to cut a drum loop around 400Hz to make it sound less boxy. By doing this, I also leave room for the bass to be boosted and made clearer. By cutting the drums and boosting the bass in the same frequency range, you will help to clean up the drums, accentuate the bass, as well as helping the overall clarity of the mix. The second method I call the opposite frequency complement. Let's say I have a great bass sound that could do with some top-end harmonics, but at the same time is also competing in the low frequencies with my kick drum. One effective approach is to apply a low cut filter to the bass and a gentle boost to the upper mids with a parametric EQ. EQing the bass like this allows space for the kick drum whilst boosting the high mids brings out the upper harmonics, giving the bass more presence in the track. You can apply complementary EQ to all manner of instruments and vocals to achieve a balanced mix and ultimately a louder master. 
To get the fourth and final part in this series, go now to masteringinlogic.com where you can learn more great tips and grab your free PDF guide to mastering. Thanks for watching.